The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Saint Mark. Glory to you, Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who shall prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths stay straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And they went out to him all the country of Judea, and all the people of Jerusalem. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, and had a leather belt around his waist, and ate locusts and wine. And he preached, saying, After me comes he who is mightier than I, the thorn of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Shalom. 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 The second Sunday of Advent. We see last Sunday, the season of Advent has four Sundays, and these four Sundays are Sundays that help us to understand the meaning of the birth of the Lord in our lives. The first Sunday we meditate on waiting for the Lord in hope. The second Sunday, which is today, then we meditate on the peace that will come with the birth of the Messiah. The third Sunday, we shall meditate on the joy that we shall experience when the Messiah is born. And on the fourth Sunday, which is the closest to the celebration of Christmas, we celebrate the love. The love that we see that God has accepted to become a man like us so that we can be saved, that we can have salvation. So today, the second Sunday of Advent, the theme is Prepare the highway for the Lord. Prepare the way for the Lord. And we can ask ourselves, how are we going to do this? What is going to happen? And we see in the second reading, the reading from the second letter of St. Peter, we are being asked a very important question. That how are we to wait on the Lord? Since all these are thus to be dissolved, what sort of persons ought you to be in life of holiness and godliness as we hold the coming of the Messiah? We are told then we are supposed to be waiting for and hastening for the day of the Lord because of which the heavens will be kindled and dissolved and the elements will be made. And at the end of the reading, the reading told, Therefore, beloved, since you wait for this, be zealous to be found by him without spot or blemish and acts. Without spot or blemish. 
King Nebuchadnezzar came and captured the city of Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple. He even took the vessels of worship with him to Babylon, which he used in his palace during his palace. The wall of Jerusalem was destroyed. The children of Israel would no longer worship Yahweh in the way they did. And when they were in Babylon, they sacked a lot. Not only suffering from being away from their country, from the promised land, but away from the true worship. And then they were waiting one time that the Lord would bring them back to Israel, to Judah. And prophet Isaiah, in his chapter 40 of the prophet Isaiah's writing, he is telling them a time will come when the Lord will prepare that highway, that the valleys will be filled, the hills and the mountains will be leveled, there will be a highway for you to return to your land. And this is very good news to the children of Israel. But they never knew when this would happen. But Prophet Isaiah is telling them, Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that the sorrow that they had is going to end. And this is the peace that was going to come to them as they were to march back to Jerusalem. And indeed, at one time, after many years in exile, the Lord sent a king who was going to be lenient to the Israelites. Cyrus, the king of Persia, when he captured Babylon and all the countries around uh, Israel, he allowed the children of Israel to go back to Israel. He even allowed Nehemiah, who was working in one of the king's courts, to go and rebuild the wall, to go and rebuild the temple of Jerusalem. And therefore, a time that prophet Isaiah was prophesying would indeed come that the hills would be leveled, that the valleys would be filled, and they were to walk, they were to go back to Israel where they would worship their God in truth and in spirit, as we read uh, in the gospel. Uh, Jesus Christ was conversing with his maritime woman telling them that in Jerusalem we shall worship in truth and spirit. And we see that in this prophecy, prophet is there. He is talking that there will not be peace as long as they are in exile. As long as they are away from the place of worship, the holy city of Jerusalem, they are not going to be at peace. Wakimabali namji wa Jerusalem Wakiwa pali na nyumba ya mungu ambawa likuwa mezuwea kuhida kuwa kuna kusali hawa takuwa na amani mungu. Na hii amani takuja kwao wakati ambako wakarudi yekule Israel na wakakua katika mungi wa Jerusalem ambako wakabeza kwa kudu mungu kwa kweli na kwa kwa. Na basi wakakako Rudi katika mungu wao As long as they are away from the holy city they are gods The gospel is entering this preparedness when we see in the beginning of the gospel of St. Mark chapter 1 and verses 1 to 8 we see that the gospel is telling us that the words that are written in the book of prophet Isaiah, Behold, I send my messenger before your face. And what will this messenger do? Who shall prepare your way? And how will he prepare this way? A voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord made his path straight. And as we know, the gospel continues, this is 
John the Baptist, who was going to be living in the wilderness, who was going to have the camel, the, the camel's hair as his clothes, who was going to have around his waist a leather belt, and on his food in the wilderness, he was going to be feeding on locusts and wild men. But he was not going to be the Messiah. He is a voice. Sauti Liyai Nikani, take it the name of Jia Zawana. Why a voice? As he says at the end of the reading, they are going to come after me. One who I am unworthy to even bend and untie the thongs of his sons. He is only a voice, and therefore the word is going to come. And the word is going to bring peace. This one is none other than Jesus Christ. If you read in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 1, you always read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. This is the Word that John the Baptist is preparing for. He comes as a voice, but this voice is having a lot of power, telling the children of Israel to prepare the way. How are they to prepare? I confess this He was preaching a gospel of repentance. And those who are able to repent, he baptized them with water in the river Jordan. Brothers and sisters, when we are in sin, when we are not repented, we cannot do this. And therefore, the promise that the Lord is inviting me and you to fill up on this second side of argument is the one is. Of sin. The mountains and hills that are telling us to level out in our lives are those valleys of sin. Yes, whenever we go against the command of God, the priests of God, then we are creating mountains. We are digging valleys that will make us it difficult for us to reach our God. That will make us not be at peace. Because just like the people of Israel, when we are far away, when we are not near the temple of the Lord, when we are far away from the city of the Lord, there is no peace. We are away from the Lord. And this is by repenting of our sins. We know the commandments. And these commandments that we have, the temple Lord, the Ten Commandments, the first three commandments, the first second and third, remind us of our duty towards God. We shall worship our God with all our heart and our mind. The second commandment, we shall not, we shall not call the name of the Lord in vain. And that commandment, thou shalt keep the Sabbath day home. Oh, that we shall worship God in the room we shall worship. And then from the fourth commandment to the tenth commandment, this one remind us. About our duty towards our neighbor. Duty towards our neighbor. But you can ask, like the good lawyer who went to Jesus Christ, and who is my neighbor? And the story of the good Samaritan, Jesus explained very well that my neighbor is that person who is in need. And therefore, the full commandment that talks about the respect of children for their parents, and the parents' respect for their children. Order your father and mother that you may live many days in this life and many in the kingdom of God. The fifth commandment reminded us about respect of the dignity of human life. That human life got to be respected from the moment of conception, the moment of natural death. Thou shalt not kill in your own And even we think about Sometimes when we keep other people's children. The same commandment reminding me and you about the duty for us to respect the dignity of the human sexuality given to us by like God. To remain chaste, whether we are married, whether we are single, whether we are whatever state we are in, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not commit fornication. Brothers and sisters, the rest of the commandments still remind us of what our duty is to God. Thou shalt not steal. 
keep away from things that don't belong to you. Corruption is stealing things from other people. Yet our country is full of this corruption. Even with the call of being political leadership today, talking about building bridges initiative, we can also see there sometimes another corruption that people are looking for what they can get for themselves. Look at what stories we hear when the coronavirus was big thing in our country. We see headlines in our papers, uh, COVID-19 millionaires, isn't it? Because people have taken or are purported to have taken things that belong to taking care of people through the coronavirus. And therefore, these are people who are taking things that ought to be given to those who need them. But my brothers and sisters, it is easy to point at them. As remember when you're pointing at other people, four fingers are pointing. What have we done? What mountains have you created against, uh, against the command of God? Maybe you are stealing, maybe you are lying. Thou shalt not be a false leader against the neighbor. Thou shalt not correct the neighbor's wife. Thou shalt not correct the neighbor's goods. Yes, this commandment against the duties, the duty I have, my work the neighbor, creates mountains in a day that we live on. In a way that we are born in Katiamu Namu, Nabasi Namu, Nabasi Namu, Nabasi Namu, Babu, Nimeji, Giza, Katika Mambo, Ambado, Yana, Weka, Bazira, Katiamu Namu, Nabasi Swizi, Kuwa Namu. Let us pray therefore today that we shall follow Jesus Christ who has come so that we may have life and have it all. And then we shall have peace. Then we shall have peace. This second Sunday for Advent and the whole week in me is inviting me to have this. The second letter of St. Peter is our second reading. is indeed telling us of how we need to move on. How we need to break those chains that will dissolve us and keep us away from God. As I pointed out, it is very easy to look out there. But during this time of Advent, there's a moment to look into my life, to look into my family, so that I can say, where do I get that peace? Where do I get that peace? We may ask ourselves, even as we are being coerced or being pushed to accept things by our government, by the people who are our leaders, that we should move in this way, BDI or whatever things. Listen to what the service is telling us. And we don't find it there, and we say, ah.
They are now beloved, since he waited for this, being zealous, to be found by him in a spot of blemish and darkness. May the Lord help me and you, my brother and my sister. We are peace as we wait in hope, in joy, and in love for the birth of Messiah. May Mary, our mother, help us. Always, man.